For this video I broke grapple slingshotting down into 6 easy to understand and train steps that build on top of each other to make this video into a great combination of being thorough while being super easy to understand. Grapple slingshotting is fundamentally based on a movement technique called air strafing. It's the ability to steer yourself mid-air by turning your view into the same direction you are moving. And I strongly believe that before you can be truly great at slingshotting, you have to understand air strafing. So our first step is to learn the air strafe inputs. At this point you can pick any legend you want to. I found this spot near Slum Lakes and Pit to be great for all the first training. So train the following inputs. Move to the left while turning your view to the left or move to the right while also turning your view to the right. Both at the same time looking like this. Do not input a forward movement. Try to switch from left to right. Try quicker and slower movement. Just trust me and spend some time getting used to what your fingers are doing here while inputting this movement. Step number two doing the same movement you just trained on the ground while being in the air. Take Octane, go to your training ground, throw his jump pad on the ground and walk onto it. And as soon as you hit the jump pad, let go of moving forward and only do the exact same input you just trained on the ground. So movement to the left while turning your view to the left. Or movement to the right while turning your view to the right. If you input a forward movement, you'll lose large parts of your steer ability compared to a plane movement to the left or right. Et voila, you are air strafing. Hitting jump as you contact the jump pad will give you a boost and thereby more air time to train air strafing. I encourage you to play around with this. Try what happens when you move your view faster or slower. Compare where you land and how sharp your turn was. Try to switch directions in the middle of it. You should start to get a feeling for turning your view just sharp enough to get maximum direction change out of it. After you got comfortable with it, maybe try to curve around some trees. Just have some fun. Remember that feeling of riding the air strafe and having control over where you are going. It's going to be similar with the grapple. Speaking of it, step number 3. Adapting air strafing for the grapple. For air strafing we try to avoid any forward movement, but for grappling we are going to need it. So back to our patch of land to train the inputs. Sideways movement plus forward movement is also commonly known as a strafe. So strafe to the left and turn your view to the left. Or strafe to the right and turn your view to the right. Then try to play around with it exactly as previously. Especially try to get into a flow while switching sides. We are going to need this in the next step. It should feel a bit like skiing. Smooth but sudden switches from left to right. Again, take your time and get used to what your fingers are doing here. Since we are now finally going to introduce the grapple for the next step, I am going to call the inputs without forward movement an air strafe and the inputs with forward movement a grapple strafe. So step number 4 doing grapple strafing while being connected to the grapple. The most important part of a successful slingshot is switching directions in the middle of it. That's why we try to get into the skiing rhythm. Aim at the point that's about 3 to 4 meters up and walk backwards till you find the furthest point it lets you grapple from, indicated by the blue crosshair. Grapple onto the tree and do a small grapple strafe to the right before switching to a grapple strafe to the left. I advise you to do small view motions at the start and slowly work your way up to larger motions. And you really have to spend some time here. You need to develop a feeling for the grapple and grapple strafing. Try how late and fast you can switch directions. Test out when the grapple breaks. See what happens if you don't switch directions at all. This is mainly about experiencing the limits so you learn how to stay inside of them. If you start to feel comfortable with it, you should also start to feel the similarity to air strafing I mentioned earlier. This feeling of surfing on the momentum you are generating. For step number 5, we will start to manipulate our view input. For now, we are only moving our view from left to right. But to get even more out of the grapple, you need to break off from that horizontal view line. 
we will start by only tilting the view line. The view inputs are still on a straight line, the line is just tilted. Generally speaking, the higher up your grapple point is, the stronger you can tilt your view line. Same procedure as last step, train and get comfortable. You can also always include some dry practices to get used to the inputs. Before going on to step number six, breaking the view line. Once you even break loose from the straight view line and leave behind this last constraint, you will start to experience the true potential of the grapple. This is the view input you will need for 90% of your grapple slingshots. Visualized it sort of looks like this. So we start the same as in the last step by going diagonally down, but then smoothly transitioning into the counter input. Variations of the shape of this input will already give you a bunch of freedom with the grapple. This is then the point where console and PC drift apart a bit. On PC, you can flick your mouse to the corner first and hold it there a bit before transitioning into the counter input. This often helps with getting tension into the grapple. On a controller, it's much simpler to just do everything in one continuous move. Speaking of input methods, please also be aware that this is still only the view input. Your mouse or right thumbstick. We are still doing a very basic right-left strafe as our movement input. To get a feeling for this, you can again go back and just train the inputs while trying to visualize the fitting slingshot, or, which brings us to the imaginary step number seven, train with it. I presented to you the fundamentals you need to understand the grapple. To get really good with it, you have to use it. So since you are now training with the grapple in the actual game environment, here are some additional tips that will help you in trying to tame the grapple. Jumping at the right time can give you an additional boost. This can give you more height and range depending on the situation. You want to jump the moment the grapple connects to its target. Always try to max out your grapple distance. This will make a huge difference in the range you can achieve. Try to get the grapple to nearly break throughout the entire view motion. The closer you can ride it to its limits, the more momentum you'll get out of it. Usually, if you hit the ground too hard, you'll come to a complete stop. Try to hit inclining surfaces like little rocks to keep your momentum. Another way to keep your momentum a bit longer is to use slide or bunny hopping. I won't talk about that in this video, but plan to include it in a future pro movement guide. So you know what to do if you don't want to miss that. You can disconnect from the grapple manually by hitting crouch or the tactical button again. A tip for PC players, I have my tactical button and sliding both on mouse buttons. This is a leftover from my playtime of Titanfall 2, where movement played a much greater role. I also picked up using my scroll wheel to bunny hop in Apex. This way a bunch of movement related inputs are combined in one hand. I imagine myself that this helped with the learning curve and with muscle memory of grapple slingshotting, air strafing and bunny hopping. Once you train enough with the grapple you will also develop a favorite swing direction. For me it's definitely right to left, which you might have already noticed throughout this tutorial. All these tips enhance your abilities with the grapple. But the backbone you will have to rely on during day by day gameplay is your understanding and training of the fundamentals of the movement in this game. If you made it this far into the video, you seem to be pretty damn interested in mastering the grapple. So let me tell you about the last 5 to 10% of grapple slingshots that are not covered by the base input. They start out by resembling it but can end up looking completely different. 
Here I'm also going to tell you about your ability to not only grapple strafe to the left or right, but also forward and backwards. In this clip for example, I'm only inputting a forward movement, while not inputting any view input at all. Which allows me to get distance from the balcony, so I can clear it on my backswing. Backwards grapple strafing is only helpful in trying to reduce momentum from the grapple, but this can aid you in landing precisely. I'm not going to explain these advanced slingshots in detail. If you are at the point where you are trying to emulate these, you should be good enough to discover your own weird slingshot variations. But that's also a reason why I built this tutorial the way I did. If you have deepened your training with the basics, like air strafing, you are more likely to understand what is happening with these advanced inputs. Advanced inputs would also be to air strafe after you detach from the grapple. With everything you have learned at this point, you can air strafe, grapple strafe and then air strafe again. The more you use the grapple, the more will air strafing become second nature and will slowly creep into your normal gameplay. That's another thing I want to explore and explain in my pro movement guide. Again, if you don't want to miss that or any of my other future videos, you know what to do. Also let me know in the comments if this video helped you. Did you learn something new? I would love to hear from beginners as well as advanced users of the grapple. If you want to see even more videos focused on movement, I can recommend this playlist. If you want to see what happens when I get my hands on 3D models of the game, you can click here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.